driving a vehicle that you've built with your own hands is a completely different experience. Two weeks after this video was shot, we packed our car, our dreams, and left for Delhi to Budh International. We're going to compete with the best teams in India at the Budh International. We reached there, and they started unloading our vehicle. And I saw that one wheel had started rolling down. It was a mix of happy and sad, because maybe some other team, their car had not survived the rough roads. And we were happy because maybe lesser competition. But something felt similar about that wheel. As it turns out, it was our wheel. As we entered inside, we saw that the vehicle was completely damaged. Even to a certain extent, it was beyond repairable. And I started getting flashbacks of a year-long journey which started with a very small team from Nashik, having no basic infrastructure, no advanced machinery, but just crazy idea that we want to build a racing car, a Formula racing car, and compete with the best teams in India. We had no plans, no funding, no permission also from the college. So what we did, we just had one dusty workshop. We converted that workshop into our home, literally. We ate there, slept there, worked there, and even celebrated our birthdays there. We had finally found a passion, a reason for us to build something. And after a year of these continuous efforts of building, breaking, learning, making a lot of mistakes, the vehicle was finally ready. And here I am standing at Budh International with a vehicle that is completely broken. Some of the other teams had also faced similar issues. A few of them quit because they thought that they couldn't flip this around. And that was also a thought that came to my mind and my team's mind as well. We could quit. But then we had a couple of hours at our hand, and we decided to give our best and to see if we can make the most of this situation. Otherwise, anyways, we are out of it. So we turned our hotel parking into a garage, literally. We borrowed tools that we didn't have from nearby shops. We begged the local manufacturer to machine small components for us. And somehow, after seven and a half hours of effort, the vehicle was up and running. We went, it to, we went to the circuit. We registered. The next day, we didn't win. But when that engine revved, the amount of happiness that we've received is beyond imaginable. And that's when I learned my most important lesson is that plans fail, but persistence doesn't. And when you're going off the map, you actually drive by instinct. Years later, that, that same curiosity took me from cars to drones. Nilesh, my co-founder, was working on air taxis. And he found out that for a decade, the plan of operating drones was a drone needed a very skilled pilot to operate, basically a human joystick. It's fine because it worked. But when we're looking at scale, millions of drones changing our life, making our cities smarter, safer, or delivering medicines to us, this one-to-one -one systems completely collapses. And when we're envisioning driverless cars, why not pilotless drones? That is when we felt maybe the plan itself is wrong. Maybe we need to have better, rather than having better, bigger drones, we need smarter and self-sustainable drones. That idea, that crazy idea, led me from racetracks to the skies. Hi, I am Nikhil Rajput. I am the co-founder and CEO of Nextcube, where we are building a drone with an airport in a box, basically an autopilot for it to land charge, and execute another mission without any human intervention. Basically, a completely pilotless system. When we were entering and trying to rewrite the laws of an industry, there was no map. We knew we were taking off. We didn't know where we would land and when we would land, but we knew we would figure it out. And that's how my journey from drones, from cars to drones, is a journey from breakdowns to breakthroughs all built without a map. Every idea needs a vision. 
It's not a step-by-step -step guide, but it's something that guides you con continuously. I learned that for a startup, the compass is actually the deepest pain point or a problem that you want to solve for the next couple of decades. And we had found our compass. It was not to build bigger drones or different categories of them. We wanted to actually make an autonomous world for drones. When we started, we got a couple of feedback that maybe other drone companies could beat us to it. Or Nashik is not the best place for us to build this. We could go to Bangalore, where we would have better talent, better resources, and better network. But we wanted to build this from Nashik, because we had seen hunger in that racing car team that was built with limited resources. We kind of tried to convert all our disadvantages into some superpowers. We succeeded, we failed, but we continue to do that. And we started by asking very simple, basic questions. What is it that a pilot really does on ground? Can he justify the cost and the dependencies that he brings to operate a drone? Because a drone cannot fly without a pilot handling a remote control. These questions led us to start building Nextcube and iterating around the idea. For every journey, you have to fuel up. For us, the fuel was not just money, but it was mindset. We are entering into a territory that was not walked a lot. We had no parallels. So for us, mindset would be one of the key points where if we break, we might lose and stop doing this. So mindset included that we had to be ready for a public failure. We had to continuously innovate, do multiple build and break cycles. And similarly, we couldn't hire a team of experienced people. So we started hiring people who had a hustler mindset. They, they were not very skilled, but they knew that if an opportunity comes to them, they have to find some solutions and not complain about the lack of resources or the tools they had. It took us time to build that team, but eventually we are there. And what I've seen is that innovation and creativity actually comes when you have the odds stack against you. Similarly, Years ago, when we were building that racing cars, the obvious first thought in our mind was, we had already worked on this vehicle for a year. We had put our sweat, blood into that product. And now when we are here to compete, this incident has happened, barring us from participating. But a team from Nashik, some 10, 12 people decided that they are not going to give up no matter what. And they did. They flipped it around, and things started working. I learned that grit over genius actually sustains in the longer run. When you start, the initial days are like a smooth road. You know, your first ideas are starting to work, your prototypes are doing well, you are finally a founder, so you start getting those claps and those recognition. And you feel like you are cruising at a nice speed, but this speed sometimes can lie. Because the speed in the wrong direction actually takes you away from your direction. There are similar such things where, you know, this smooth, this, the smooth roads are supposed to be for you to quickly accelerate, start building with the users, and customers will give you real-world feedback. It's not for you to sit down and admire the view. Being engineers, we somehow fell in this trap. We wanted our first iteration to be polished perfect. And we wanted to say, wow, what a product these people have built. Unfortunately, this is the perfection paradox. We started stretching our timelines. We, keep, we kept on adding more and more features that were not even needed. But we felt that our product needed it. And our timeline started delaying. We had done hundreds of simulations, field tests. And as soon as we landed to one of our customers, after a very long delay, when we landed with him, he started using it. The first demo failed. We felt it's fine. We'll breathe. We'll just figure out a couple of things. And things will start falling back into place. After all, we have done hundreds of simulations. Back to back, tens of flights started failing. All our products on field started failing. Extreme weathers like rain, dust, communication issue, extreme overheating started failing the product. 
we had added so many features that they were actually bulking the system and that was also a reason for the failure. We admitted our mistake and that's when I came across this one quote from, from Reid Hoffman. He says that if you're not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you've actually launched too late. While we had launched too late, we had still been embarrassed by our product. So we decided to realign. We made our first users as our co-pilots. Till now we are working with them because it's an iterative journey. We told them it's a prototype and it will fail. But we are here to support you when it fails and together when the final iteration comes, it will have lesser problems. Those buyers actually became our believers. And to this point, we try and do these developments on a continuous basis where we are continuously innovating, but validating and building with our users. As we just navigated this small hurdle of the perfection paradox, in a journey, a breakdown is worse than a wrong turn. Our system completely broke down because we had spent too much amount of time, energy, efforts, and burnt ourselves out in a very perfect product. So we had ran out of all the funds. We had no clarity how we were moving forward. And suddenly, the team, the small team that we had built at Nextcube, they couldn't see the vision. They felt that we as founders were unsure. They couldn't see their products on field, and they decided to quit. All breakdowns actually come bearing gifts. While it's a very sad point or one of the lowest point in your journey, but it actually comes bearing gifts. Because every breakdown strips you of anything that is non-essential. We were very fortunate to be a part of Digital Impact Square, where they gave us the right tools to dissect the situation. We looked at our product, the real problem we were solving, the market, and their requirements. We started building one thing at a time, and things started rolling. We got more clarity into the product as to what we wanted to build, and then slowly resources, funding started coming into picture. When you're going through, you sometimes feel that you are cruising at a very good speed, but when you look up, you feel that you've not really reached anywhere. That just feels like a traffic jam in a journey. For us, this similar thing happened when we thought we didn't have any differentiation. While we were the only one in India who were building a product like this, our global competitors were innovating and iterating very quick. We had no clear differentiation. We are all trying to solve the same problem. And then, because a competition validates a market, but a differentiation is what defines a market leader. So we had the only option again to go back to our users, sit with them, and we didn't ask them about what more features do you want in the product. We asked them about what were their day-to-day -day challenges. We asked them what is it that they kind of hate about the existing set of products. And a lot of input started pouring in. These inputs were one of the important part of our journey as they started developing our product into something bigger and better. Equipped with all of these insights, we started iterating forward. We didn't pivot or stop our idea, but we started iterating forward. We understood that while drones is a very good to have, there is always a mind block about operating a new set of technology. So our customers, both in defense and enterprises, they wanted us to deliver a system which somehow integrates in their day-to-day -day workflows and starts adding value. And that is when Nextcube vision has gotten bigger and better. We are no more just an airport in a box company, but we are building drone agents. Drone agents that make large premises secure, safe, and operationally more efficient. You are working with large mining companies, power plants, renewables, oil and gas, to somehow drive an impact where drone becomes a day-to-day -day part of their operations. There is a video. During one of our key demos, we were doing a demo for one of the biggest conglomerates in India. And we had tested our product here, which was under 30 knots. Uh, and it started suddenly getting too windy. The drone was not able to land. Our operations were constantly failing. We had no other option. So I asked the customers to build a human wind barrier. 
and they obliged they laughed but they obliged and our drone landed so you face a lot of these day to day challenges these are things that are not dramatic not very very unglamorous but something that you have to solve on a day to day basis and if you solve them and dissect them properly they do not repeat i am happy to share that when we used to deploy we used to take an hours or days to deploy a system and now we are able to deploy them within a couple of minutes when you are on a solo trip or when you are traveling in a group you always stop and you ask people for direction that has been the mentors in our journey they have not given us um, any clear step by step instructions but they actually gave us realignment to the direction that we are going through some of the inputs that we got were you are building a product that is going to be for defense and enterprise being out there so you have to build it like a tank you just you just don't have to build a piece of technology but build a technology or something that is so addictive that a user can't stop using it these have become one of the clear points for us moving forward and when i look back at the journey i do not see a straight line i see this map which is very messy and it's very colorful there are multiple steps red is for vision black is for when we had to pivot yellow is for that grid that we continued but and it left us with multiple defense projects enterprise projects where our systems are running and making a day to day impact we found people to be a part of our journey we had multiple innovation awards but one of the most important thing that we still remember is a pat on the back from a customer who said that we were solving a pain point for them we were making them more efficient more safer across mining we also added people who became a part of the journey and also funded us moving forward and when i look back i do not see that the product has survived but it's actually the vision that has survived and thrived from two founders to now a team of 30 people we are building a frontier technology for the world from nashik and we continue to rewrite our maps we draw them and we move to near destination and we are not looking to stop any time soon when i look back at our journey from those garage to drone agents if i had to talk to 20 year old self myself when i was 20 year old i would say whenever you have a crazy idea find your compass find the deepest problem you want to solve build a very simple tech something that works work with your users people who are going to give you feedback and when you are navigating always look at your dashboard look where you are going how fast you are going and look at your rear view mirror which will tell you if you are missing any milestones and when you do that change your gear and go ahead because whenever you don't have a map don't start drawing one because even if you do it's going to not work rather start walking and draw your map as you go thank you